we selected three artists who have shown that they are tackling this challenge both with the materials that they use, which are also sustainable and biodegradable, but also how they've used it are to raise awareness to something that's so meaningful again and such a challenge of our times. So without any overdue, I'm going to be calling our first artist with David AU7 Trebert. Where is David? Ah. <laughs> So it's very difficult for me to ever give a short introduction to David. Um, the reason why is because David has very much made the name of our agency in terms of success. Um, we get texts from collectors in the panic at 2 a.m. weekends or all times of the day saying, please, is a planet still available? And the planets, as he would explain, are the works that have also raised awareness towards sustainability. But he's also someone that has recently partnered and collaborated with Good Planets, which is the equivalent of our David Attenborough in France. So pretty big deal in that sense. Um, I'm going to let him explain his vision, and, and I hope you're as inspired as I am. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to give a quick thank you to Marine and to the Museum of London to organize this. It's the first time that uh, I will be speaking with other artists from MT Art, so Jasmine and Saipi, and I'm really looking forward to this. So let me introduce myself. Um, my name is David Servan Schreiber. I am 29 year old. I'm an artist and uh, I consider myself as an environmentalist. And today, um, today I will try to explain how I combine these two things. It actually all started a very long time ago when I was uh, quite small as a child. I was born in a non-religious family. And when I say non-religious -re family, I mean, we would never talk about God ever. So God was a bit of an idea that was in my mind, but I didn't know exactly what it was about. Um, and as most humans, you know, I had the frequently asked questions that you want to ask God. And uh, one of those questions was, how are we here? And how, you know, how did life happen? And believe it or not, I've, I found this answer right under my feet a few later, a few years later. Um, I was gardening and some weed grew around my olive tree. And I was, this was a bit of an aha moment because I didn't plant that weed, you know, and I just realized that with the two energies of the sun and earth, life gets created. And this is how I got to paint my first planet. I just wanted to give an homage to the planet series that uh, Marine mentioned before. So this is what the planet series looks like. Uh, it's, it's really, it highlights the beauty and the power of planets. Um, through this, the planet series, you've got subcategories, but I'm not gonna bore you with this today. Uh, one category is about you know, the, the deforestation, and you will see all uh, on my website if you're interested. Um, but later on, I started a new series called Fever. And Fever is, you know, it's, it's a series that pictures a land that where life is simply not possible due to human activity. Uh, it's a land, you know, very dry and unhealthy. And what I realized over the years is that climate change is very comparable to fever. So, you know, when us humans get a disease, we tend to increase our temperature to get rid of that disease. This is called having fever. Um, and it's, it's quite similar, that what the, the, this fact is quite similar to what's happening with our planet and climate change. You see, uh, you know, we as species are growing drastically from, you know, in numbers years after year, and we're becoming more and more toxic. And as a result, we are witnessing an increase of temperature year after year. And so there's really one thing that I want to tackle tonight is when we use the, the, the sentence bad for the planet, bad for the planet is I think something that we're all convinced when you say don't do this is bad for the planet, deep inside we know 
it's not true. Um, you know, the, probably, the probable fate of the planet is that it's going to be absorbed by the sun in about 7.5 billion years. So the planet is going to be just fine. But, you know, the problem is that most living species are going to be, are, are going to suffer from climate change and potentially until extinction, but the planet will remain. So, talking about extinction, this little cute dog might disappear, and it's going to be very sad because we don't want this cute dog disappearing. But in, a, in all seriousness, you know, before this dog disappears, the bees are in danger. And um, since the 90s, beekeepers around the world um, found a huge decline in the bee population due to industrial uh, agriculture method and parasites and also climate change and especially pesticides that we're using. And, you know, without honeybees, um, the, you know, the, 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 we, we are basically, um, as human, really relying on their pollinization. And so without, we're facing a huge threat. So to address this issue, uh, a, a gentleman called Jan Arthus Bertrand that Marine mentioned earlier, commissioned uh, a, a tower uh, and sculpture to me and three other artists. Um, we are called the Pollination Collective and we wanted to address the, the, the message of the desperation of bees to the public. So this is what we did uh, at the beginning of the year. This is located in Paris in a place called uh, La Fondation Good Planet. Um, it's a 16 meter high sculpture and the idea was uh, really to give you the feeling of what being a bee is. So I'll show you a little video. So, it's, so you see this is located in, in the Bois de Boulogne of Paris, I don't know if you've been, and there's this medieval tower there, and inside this tower we created this 16 meter sculpture. And inside the sculpture you have a, a sort of an electric, um, an, an electric light, obviously, uh, linked to sound, and there's a cycle of six minutes where when you get in, basically you get completely absorbed by the sound and the, and the light through this sculpture. And after the six minutes, basically what's going on is that you have a huge decrease in the sound and the light. And believe me, when you get there, it's very intense. And when the light goes down, fades down, and, and, and the sound as well, you just see this huge uh, sculpture becoming completely black, and so you're thrown in the pitch black, giving you the effect, the sensation of oppression and hopefully of concern. Um, and to, to conclude uh, this, this chapter, um, I think as an artist, I'm trying to affect emotions and I try to witness my time. And in my opinion, the role of an artist around sustainability is to you know, create emotion and gather around our planet and make people realize that we are responsible for the destiny of our species, but also other living species. That's it. Thank you very much.